Kendo means the way of the sword in Japanese. It developed initially under the name of Kenjutsu and reached a golden age in the Sengoku era, around the same time as the Renaissance in Europe. Back then, Japan was in a civil war that involved massive armies of samurai fighting each other during the entire century. Now, I know that massive samurai battles sound quite cool to lovers of historical movies such as myself, but civil wars are a terrible thing for the people. Which is why, in the following era, the ruler of Japan did everything he could to maintain the peace, going as far as isolating Japan from foreign countries. That policy actually worked. Japan remained mostly peaceful through the following centuries. The art of the sword also evolved, and the idea of the sword of life, Katsujin Ken, became prevalent. Kenjutsu also slowly started to standardize under the influence of the Butoku Kai and was renamed in 1926 to Kendo. Now, I know a lot of people claim that Kendo and Kenjutsu are completely different things. I will make a video about that topic later, but in short, in 1926, the Ministry of Education of Japan decided to rename standardized Kenjutsu to Kendo. There was no change in technique nor in philosophy. Now, back to the present day. Kendo is currently the most popular martial art in Japan with around 1.5 million holders of a downgrade. It is practiced using a wooden sword called a bokuto or bokken and a bamboo sword called a shinai. There is also something a bit special about Kendo compared to many other traditional martial arts. Kendo is not only practiced through forms or choreographies, it also includes full intensity sparring. Now I know you'll think that sounds either very fun or painful, but don't worry about that, Kendo is a very safe martial art to practice. Practitioners of Kendo, called Kenshi, are well protected by armor, such that the injury rate in Kendo is actually lower than in most other martial arts, including fencing and taekwondo. I know that most people start martial arts to learn self-defense, and that's not something you can really learn in Kendo. We don't really carry swords on us, it's illegal. I mean, except if your country is called Texas. And even if you were to live in Texas and carry a sword, how likely would you be to end up in a sword fight? Nonetheless, there are many good reasons to practice Kendo. First, Kendo is cool. I mean, you are not only learning the techniques of the samurai, but Kendo was also a major inspiration for the sword fighting in Star Wars. Honor. Hey! It's balance. It's justice. Kendo was everything that Jedi are. Kendo is also fun. Thanks to the Kendo armor, you can truly face off each other at full intensity. It offers a level of freedom sincerity and engagement that is hard to match. Kendo also has a deep philosophy that goes back centuries. To reach a high level in Kendo, it's essential to develop the ability to keep your mind calm, even under significant pressure, to keep yourself clear of surprise, fear, doubt and confusion, what is called Shikai no Kokoro, the four sicknesses of the heart. Kendo is also quite good to build confidence and humility. When I was a beginner, I would spar most often with people who had 5-10 times my experience, and I was completely outmatched, even though they lowered their level I was unable to do a single thing. The level difference left me with a lasting impression. It took me 3 to 5 years just to be able to offer resistance to some of my seniors.
Endo also has competitions. Kenshi face off each other in bouts, in which the winner is the first one to score 2 points, 2 ippon. To score a point you need to hit either the forearm, kote, the head, men, the stomach, do, or thrust to the throat, suki. Also need to make the strike with kikentai ichi, ki, the spirit, ken, the sword, tai, the body being united. You have to keep a strong spirit, show that you're in control, that your movements are made with clear intent and determination, and that you haven't lost your voice to pressure. That is shown with hasei, or kiai, a strong shout. Just touching your target and shouting is not enough to score though. You also need to have proper edge alignment, hasuji, sufficient power, sae, and use the sweet spot of your sword called the monouchi. You also need to use proper body mechanics and footwork, and keep a good posture. And all of those elements must be united to accomplish Kikentai Ichi. Finally, you also need what is called Zanshin, the lingering mind. It means that following your cut, you have to keep your mental alertness and physical readiness, taking a guard or position from which you can still react to what your opponent is doing. With all of those elements united, you get a neat one, a point. I know that can sound difficult, but actually the requirements for a point vary depending on the level of the tournament. As such, the standard for a point can be very high at a very high level tournament, and lower at a low level tournament. Now, that was all for today, thank you for listening. This was a brief introduction to Kendo. There are many things that I had to summarize, but I hope I could give you a good enough overall picture. And as always, all my sources are in the description.